Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. We're live. Welcome. Hope you're all doing great. It's Friday, September 30th, 2029. I hope you had a fantastic week. I hope you had a fantastic day. Well, let me not put that in the past tense. It's only 1226 p.m. right now where I am. So the day is young. The day is young. There's still a lot of day to go. So I don't want to say that in the past. Well, today we're going to be talking about stuff in the news, particularly uh, things related to hurricanes and typhoons. Now, not just the news, but things around it. We're going to be looking at some phrasal verbs. We're going to be picking out some interesting vocabulary, some cool phrases. Well, cool may be a stretch. <laughs> it's hard to say something like that is cool. Um, we're going to be talking about... Uh, we are going to be talking about some word differences that I have planned. And I also want to look at something else, which I will share later. And of course, if you have questions about grammar and culture and pronunciation and idioms and phrases or questions for me, I'm happy to answer them the best that I can. Um, I hope you had the chance to join on Wednesday where I had a conversation with Francis, which was really interesting. I enjoyed that. If you haven't checked that out, Go and do that because Francis shared a lot of interesting tips. A few things right at the start here that I want to mention. So, uh, if you want to, if you want to support the channel, the best thing to do is just tap the like button and subscribe. It honestly, it honestly does a lot. Uh, it's very, very helpful to me and not a big effort for you. So. Uh, that's an 80-20 thing that you can do for sure. Um, if you want a free course, uh, you can click on the first link in the description. That should be a free course uh, for uh, my very popular Natural English Conversations course, which teaches you how to have, yes, that's right, Natural English Conversations. You can grab that for free. I have a big course coming out. I was hoping to launch it by the end of the month. It is September 30th. I don't think it's going to happen because I'm currently uploading it. It's all done. It's going to be about 13 hours long, and I think it's going to be a good one. This is about travel English. So if you've been wanting to learn about travel English, how to handle all the travel English situations from booking things to... Uh, maybe handling what happens when you're lost or handling stuff when you get to the hotel, complaining about stuff and getting recommendations and having conversations with your fellow travelers and uh, stuff that happens at the airport, like going through immigration and the security check and checking in and all of that stuff. All that stuff is going to be in the course. It is extensive. So please do check that out. Kathy, remind me to mention that again later please. Thank you. Yes. Okay. And another one of these, please. I've got my coffee and that's good. I got another piece of good news today. Uh, I got my electric bill and it's really low. <laughs> that's exciting. So I, I uh, pay most of my bills online and <clears throat> some of them are automatically paid and some of them I like to go through the process of doing it myself because I like to keep my finger on the pulse. You know, you can easily set all your bills to automatically pay and that's fine. I could do that. But sometimes you want to just feel it, kind of feel it every every month. So in August, we used a lot of air conditioning. The air conditioning was on pretty much all the time, pretty much constantly. And so the Bill went up to, I mean, not not too bad, but but you know, it was a, it was it was fairly high, and I wasn't sure how much it was going to be, going to go down. Uh, I think it was, I forget how much it was. Well, over over two hundred dollars during the summer, um, which again is not not too bad for, for how much electricity I use, but. 
we started using less electricity because the air conditioner didn't need to be turned on as much because it's getting cooler. No heat, no cold, because it's kind of comfortable all the time. It went down an insane amount, like to, to I think, $30 or something like that. So that's pretty crazy. So that's a piece of good news. Low electric bills, exciting stuff. Uh, if you have <clears throat> questions, just put those in the chat and we're gonna get started here in a second with our first stuff. Vovin, hello from Ukraine, hello, hello. Are you a fellow Floridian? I am not a fellow Floridian, unfortunately, no. The cover image uh, of me <clears throat> in the storm is fake. It's fake, okay? That's Photoshop. I'm not outside. I never go outside. Even if the weather is nice, I don't go outside. Um, <clears throat> but I am curious uh, if, if you are a Floridian Star Wars fan, what's it like down there? Because I do want to look at Hurricane Ian and kind of understand what's going on. And then we're going to get into some related words and phrases, but I'm curious how severe it is. People wonder, what is the difference? I, you, may, you may or may not have seen, uh, right now in the United States, there's a big hurricane that's coming in, and it's called Hurricane Ian. I don't, <clears throat> I don't really know how they choose the name. It might be random in the name itself, but I know that they do go through the alphabet. And I believe they go back and forth between male and female, but they go, I think they go A female, A male, B female, B male, and then they go through the names like that. So if you've heard, for example, of Hurricane Katrina, that's because they were on K, and that's why it's called Hurricane Katrina. They had to choose, they had to choose a name. So let's see what's going on in Florida, and then we are going to get to some other stuff. Oh, by the way, what is the difference? What is the difference between a hurricane and a typhoon? I'm pretty sure I know the difference. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I think it is that a hurricane and a typhoon, they're the same thing, but a typhoon is in the eastern hemisphere of the planet. You have to have the western and eastern hemisphere and the hurricane is in the western hemisphere and if that's incorrect we can maybe look that up later but i think that's the difference okay so let's uh got a news story here about the stuff that's going on September 29th, 2022, Hurricane Ian updates. And then, <clears throat> <coughs> excuse me, they're just giving the latest. Storm system Ian has intensified to a Category 1. Category 1, I believe they have five categories. Um, as it heads towards South Carolina, which is farther north than you would typically get hurricanes. I see... Uh, I see 101 Star Wars fan in there, maybe in Florida. Uh, well, Florida gets a lot of hurricanes because hurricanes come out of tropical areas uh, where the water is warm and the warm water sort of gives fuel to the hurricane to make it stronger. As it moves farther to the north, obviously the water is colder and that takes some of the power away. But sometimes you get these freak hurricanes and typhoons that go much farther north than usual. We had a very famous one in New York about 10 years ago called Hurricane Sandy. Very, very rare for a hurricane to go all the way up to New York. And so what that means is most people are not ready for it. For example, if you go to Florida, you see that most people don't have basements. Why don't most people have basements? Because of hurricanes. I don't know if that's the only reason, but that's definitely one of the big ones. So basements would fill with water and it would destroy everything in there. Well, a lot of people in New York do have basements. And so a lot of the basements were flooded and whole areas were destroyed. An entire subway line was shut down. I believe it's still shut down even 10 years later. Um, the areas along the water in New York, for example, Long Island and in Queens and Brooklyn, Coney Island, 
were they they experienced a lot of uh, a lot of damage let's see um hurricane sandy damage <coughs> The storm resulted in the deaths of 44 city residents and inflicted an estimated $19 billion in damages and lost economic activity across New York City. Most significantly, over 69,000 residential units were damaged. 69,000 residential units were damaged. Thousands of New Yorkers were temporarily displaced. That means moved elsewhere. So you can see here along the beach, a lot of uh, a lot of destruction happening here. Um, as you can see, this is I think this is um, Seaside Heights, Atlantic City. Okay, so that's actually in uh, New Jersey. Um, some pretty serious damage there. That's not great. Mm. Wow, that's pretty severe. House is destroyed. Hurricane Sandy damage. This is a roller coaster in Coney Island. So this is Coney Island. You can see the roller coaster is underwater. That's pretty crazy. Wow. I think that's called the cyclone. So yeah. So let's get an update on what's going on here. We're going to watch this one of what we've been seeing just as we've been able to kind of get up above the area to look. Just look at the devastation that you're seeing right there. I mean, you've got debris everywhere, water and water and more. Rescued from rooftops, wow. You hear the word devastation. That is a common word associated with natural disasters. Devastation means wreckage or things have been left behind, uh, destroyed after some sort of terrible destructive force moves through, like a hurricane, like a typhoon, like an earthquake. There's a devastation in the wake of a hurricane or devastation in the wake of a typhoon. Catastrophic is uh, a very strong word. Uh, 19 people are reported dead. Conditions, the extremely dangerous conditions of that Ian unleashed, including catastrophic floods and life-threatening storm surges. And it looks like it's still moving. Hurricane Ian strengthens to maximum winds of nearly 85 miles per hour, which is pretty strong. 90% of the island is pretty much gone, Fort Myers Beach Council member says. Wow. That's, whoa. That is pretty serious. I, I don't think I would be a big fan of, li why do people buy houses here? Why do, why do they do it? The city of Fort Myers Beach on Florida's southwest coast was leveled by Hurricane Ian, a local politician said late Thursday. It made it about two-thirds down the island, and I'd say 90% of the island is pretty much gone. Fort Myers Beach Town Councilman Dan Allers tells CNN Don Lemon. 
unless you have a high rise condo or a newer concrete home uh, that is built to the same standards today, your house is pretty much gone. That's crazy. The city with a population of around 5,600 is on Estero Island in the Gulf of Mexico. Many people struggled to get to higher ground amid the storm surge, Aller said. I've heard stories of people getting in freezers and floating the freezers to another home and being rescued by higher, higher homes. Uh, instead of where the home stood, there's only rubble, the council member said. Every home... Um, uh, pretty much on the every home pretty much on the beach is gone wow evacuating to higher ground so it was in florida and now it's going to south carolina or it is in south carolina or has moved through south carolina i don't know what the latest update is but that seems pretty severe I believe if you live in Florida, you also have to get, I don't know if it's flood insurance or hurricane insurance, but there is a, and it's specifically an insurance that you can get um, to deal with that. Wow. Did you say there was no sound on the video? I was, really? Because I have a, a f uh, that's strange. Um, because I'm seeing it, I was seeing it play on my thing. Let's see, I'm just curious. Hmm. Odd. Yeah, you're right. Why is that? Let me change my input. This Black Adam ad here. I'm having sound. I'm having a lot of sound issues recently, where I get. You're able to. You're not able to see. Yeah, yeah. I understand. I. I'm sorry about that. Um, geez, I guess we could watch it again. So you're just watching me watch silence there. That, that's fun. <laughs> How it's fun! I'm. I'm kind of getting frustrated with the app that I'm using to do streaming. Um because there's so many sound problems and it's really frustrating. I'm having so many sound issues and it, it drives me crazy. Um, uh, sound not playing, sound randomly just turning off for no reason. And yeah, this is not the first time this has happened. So I apologize. You know what? This time, this time, let me know if you can hear it. I will play it one more time. And I apologize for having to just watch me watch a silent video <laughs> sorry okay where is that where is it now where is that video okay welcome to who's talking that's going I right get to introduce you to people who i think will enrich your lives what you see is what you get find out who's talking next who's talking to chris wallace sunday nights at seven on cnn I'm going to take you to okay. Fort Myers, Florida. That? What we're looking at is a CNN drone live shot. And we're going to show you some of what we've been seeing just as we've been able to kind of get up above the area to look. Just look at the devastation that you're seeing right there. I mean, you've got debris everywhere, water and water and more water. Roofs peeled off indiscriminately. And we're also seeing as you get closer to the, as you can see the shoreline to your right, you can see there are just boats have been thrown all over the place. Just look at the trees torn apart as this drone continues on through, really showing just some of the devastation that has been described to us over and over again of the hit that Fort Myers has taken. We know that so many rescues have been required. We were just talking to the Coast Guard and that they've been doing air and water rescues, people needing to be rescued from their rooftops, from what they've been dealing with. And you can see, and you just hope that so many of these families got out, got to safer ground, got to higher ground, of course, as this storm was barreling through, those streets still covered with water. You saw another image, another shot that the drone had just a moment ago of boats capsized, thrown about, looking more like toys than hundreds of thousands of dollars of beautiful boats. Piers just torn apart. 
This is just another image of what unfortunately will be many that will be coming in as lights coming up, communications are more established and we're getting a better image of what exactly we're looking at in Southwest Florida and throughout the state, even further inland now as we are learning. There you go. I think you could hear it that time and I apologize again for, for that. Um, there you go. So that's the news. That's what's going on. I do want to get into other stuff. I, it's come, kind of we're kind of using it as a theme, but I do want to talk about other other stuff. And and please do let me know if there are any other audio issues. As I said, I'm uh, considering changing what I'm using to to do these streams. I like it. I like it for what it does, but I also hate it uh, for it almost. I luckily had a backup recording, so I recently finished a course. And I realized the entire course had been recorded with not the best audio, and uh, I was able to correct it with because with a backup. But you know, it's uh, it, it's so infuriating to have to deal with. You shouldn't have to think about that, you know, for that sort of thing. Well, you guess you have to think about it, but I still. I still was frustrated by that. If you guys are just joining, um, the course I mentioned is currently at 21%. It is being uploaded. I'm working on getting it up. Once it's up, I'll put out a an introduction video on the channel so you can check that out. Um, the course is going to cover travel English and it covers all the sort of travel English situations you would expect to deal with when you're going on a trip, when you're going abroad, uh, when you're going to the airport, when you get to the hotel, when you're uh, on the plane, when you're lost, uh, when you need directions or recommendations, or when you're talking about a trip. All of these things are covered in the course. It's going to be 12 or 13 hours long, so pretty intensive to be honest and I'm really looking forward to sharing it actually okay well I do want to get to some blackboard stuff here but if you guys have any questions feel free to ask um, questions about grammar pronunciation idioms culture Whatever you may have questions about, feel free to just ask. This is also a Q&A, right? So Qs are welcome, and I shall give as many As as I can. Okay, but in the meantime, in the meantime, a thing. Which I think I can take these off for now. Um, we're going to look at two phrasal verbs that can be used to talk about hurricanes or natural disasters generally. Now, of course, important to remember that phrasal verbs have different meanings. And so one meaning might be useful for a natural disaster, a disaster situation, but then there are other meanings that have nothing to do with that, okay? We're going to look at wipe out and blow away, okay? Now you might be able to imagine what those would mean in relation to a natural disaster, but I think the key thing is to look at some examples. So we're going to hop over to the blackboard and we're going to start with wipe out. Now think about, sometimes phrasal verbs make no sense, right? Why is, does this mean that? And the answer is usually, I don't know. <laughs> but in the case of wipe out, I think it's actually somewhat reasonable. What is wiping? It's this action, right? Maybe you're cleaning something or removing something from a surface. Or you have some some schmutz on your face and you want to you want to do that. You wipe it off, right? So to wipe something out is it's it's wiped and it's 
gone gone after that. Well, that honestly is a pretty good pretty good way to think about what it means in relation to natural disasters. Okay, so there's a hurricane or a typhoon or there are severe floods, right? A storm surge in a typhoon or hurricane, the water that comes inland is called the storm surge, which causes massive flooding. What if it destroys a bunch of houses? What if it flips boats over? What if it knocks down trees? What if a whole area is basically flat or unlivable now as a result of this? And you could say tornado, you could say perhaps an earthquake, and you can use it in many other ways, but whole towns have been wiped out by floods, really gives us a sense of how devastating the floods are. If we just say the, the floods were severe, okay, that sounds pretty bad, but I can't really picture that. But if I say whole towns have been wiped out, it's like they're flattened, they're gone, they're not even there. And so wipe, wiping out, wiped out is kind of extreme in that sense. It is quite strong as a thing that happens. How about this? A large percent of, it, of Europe was wiped out by the plague. You may have heard of the Black Death, which was around, I believe, between the 13th to early 16th centuries, perhaps, or the mid-16th centuries. I don't know the exact dates. But the plague was serious. The Black Death was a very terrible disease that was very severe in Europe and killed tens of millions of people, hundreds of millions, I think tens of millions, a huge number, right? Okay, well, in that case, it's not the towns that are being wiped out, but the people. The, and it's so severe that you could say a, you could say it as a percentage. So we're not talking about Europe, the, the place, the geography, we're talking about the people in Europe during the plague, a large percentage was wiped out, wiped out. So obviously that's quite severe. And of course there's a negative connotation there. But we could talk about it economically. It doesn't have to be a plague or a natural disaster. It could be economics. Now then we're talking about another level. Then we might not be talking about people's lives, whether they are alive or dead, or whether their homes are there or not there. We might instead be talking about their bank accounts or uh, their investment accounts, their investment savings. The recession is wiping out a lot of retirement investments. So this is something that happens when there is a recession or the market goes down. A lot of people put their money as they move toward retirement into these accounts that grow over time along with the market maybe an index fund and it goes up and up and up and sometimes it goes down a little bit and up but over the course of 20 years it generally trends upward okay great but now it's time for me to retire i'm 65 years old i'm ready to retire i'd like to cash out please but you hit the bottom of a hill so maybe it's still higher than when you started but you're, it's not enough to retire on. So maybe there's a recession and they have to wait a little longer. Sometimes people have to work longer because they don't want to take out their investment savings. So the recession is wiping out a lot of retirement investments. That's their funds, their money, their earnings, their returns. I was wiped out after my walk. So Imagine you go on a walk, you normally walk an hour, and then you go on a two or three hour walk, and you finish and you're just exhausted. You're flattened. You can barely move. You're so tired, your legs are aching. So you can say that you're wiped out. To be wiped out is usually extreme fatigue. Now, there are even more ways to use wipe out we're not going to talk about but generally this is the idea and i think from these you can get a pretty good sense of how it's used and when you see it at least you know there's something extreme going on usually it's negative there's kind of a destruction or taking away and that's typically how it's used now we're going to look at blow away and this is sometimes negative, but often the opposite in the sense that it is used 
in a positive a lot of the time. And you'll often see it written as, instead of blow, blown. Blown away. If someone says that they were blown away, that's not a negative thing. That's a positive thing. Very positive. They're amazed. They're shocked. They're so amazed. They can't believe how great it is. They can't believe how amazing it is. Now, sometimes that's used negatively. I was blown away by the level of corruption I saw. All right, well, that's about something negative. But most of the time, it's used in the positive sense. So let's, let's just take a look at a couple of examples here to get a sense for it. And, and I want to be clear, because we're talking about things we can use for hurricanes and natural disasters, that there is a literal physical meaning. The reporter nearly got blown away during his coverage. So a reporter standing there with a microphone. Why do they always do it? <laughs> They want to look cool on the news. They want to show people, hey, look at me. I'm right in the middle of the storm. I'm, I'm, a, real, I'm a real reporter. <laughs> See how tough I am to stand in the middle of the rain. Why can't they just stand indoors and look out the window at the extreme wind and rain? Why do they have to go out in it and be blown over by it? But if it's so strong, you can find YouTube videos showing this, they will actually poof, fall down. So they got, and then they will be, be blown down the street. So they were actually blown away by the hurricane winds. The reporter was nearly blown away. Last time I played golf, I got absolutely blown away. So maybe I played golf with uh, my brother or something, and uh, I thought, oh, I'm going to do pretty well. I'm doing good. I've been practicing. But then he's so much better than me. So he absolutely destroys me. So in a competition, when one beats another, and it's not a small margin, it's a large margin, it's a huge amount, we can say that the one who loses is blown away. It's like a, <laughs> that's how badly you're destroyed by the other person. You could talk about teams this way. You could talk about competitions this way. This is getting blown away. It's not by a small margin. It's by a wide margin. But how about this? Your art blows me away. I'm amazed by it. I can't believe it. And this is not negative. Of course, this is positive. It blows me away how talented you are. I'm blown away by the attention to detail. When you're looking at the art, you can't believe of the shadows and the highlights and the texture of the fabric, how amazing the details are. And it's way above your expectations. You think it's amazing, so you say you are blown away by it. I would say blown away is actually much more common to see than blow away. Of course, blow away is fine. Blown is perhaps just more common because we, we talk about things we think are amazing more often than we talk about, for example, something like this, that this thing is doing it to me. We say usually, I am blown away rather than it blows me away. So hopefully all of these are clear. Make sure you're working on your own examples if you want to get a sense for how to use them. Make your own examples. Practice what you learn, and it will be much easier to use them when you need them in the future. Okay. So hopefully that's all clear. I think these are interesting. I like um, these phrasal verbs are cool. I like... I better erase this. I better erase it. Okay. I've got a question from Abdul Malik. Uh, would you, uh, well, okay. So Abdul Malik says, I would like to ask if you don't mind to give a quick perspective about conditional tense. So one thing I would say there is conditionals are not tenses. A tense is a change to a verb to tell you something about where it is on the timeline. That's a tense. Usually it's about where it is on the timeline. And tenses can be used in different ways. 
The conditional, though, is a structure, a grammatical structure that basically allows you to, we talked about it before recently, it basically allows you to connect two things together. And one thing depends on the other. That's usually what conditionals are for. Now, there are different types of conditionals. There's a zero conditional, one, two, and three, and then a mixed, mixed conditional. But essentially, they're doing the same thing. Usually, it's going to be an if statement of some kind. And then connected to that if statement, for example, if I live to age 125, then you have another thing that would be true, right, if the first happens. So conditional is this, if yes, that, and then perhaps if no, another thing. If yes, A. If no, B. Now, that's a little oversimplified, but that's the basic idea. Where it gets interesting is how, it, how these are used. So you have the, the, the zero and first conditional, and the zero and first conditional are, uh, are similar in a lot of ways because we're talking about things that are either completely certain or true in general, or we're talking about things that are probable or likely to happen in the future, for example. If it is hot, I go swimming. And that, as a zero, zero conditional, would be something that's universally true. I'm not focusing on when it happens or, or uh, whether it's in the past or the future. This is just something I do. And it suggests that it happens every time, right? Uh, whereas if I want to talk about something in the near future, then it would be, if it rains tomorrow, I won't go on my walk. And then it's more local or more immediate. We're talking about a specific instance, right? And sometimes the first conditional is just used to talk about things that may not always be true. And the, the first or the zero one is to talk about things that are just true, basically. So that's the idea, right, of these. And you can use them to talk about hypotheticals. For example, the rain one, that might be true. If it rains tomorrow, I won't go, go for a walk. Yeah, that's true about me, about possibly what may or may not happen tomorrow. But if I say, if I were a hamster, if I were a dinosaur, right, well, that's never going to be true. So there I'm exploring a complete hypothetical thing that is not attached to any reality whatsoever, can never be true, probably, unless there is some way to, if they ever have become a dinosaur for a day pills, I would like to. I would like to do one as a triceratops and one as a, well, psh, I think a Tyrannosaurus rex would be pretty, pretty dope. So that's the, the basic idea. Again, they're not tenses, they're grammatical structures, and they're the ones that use if. Hope that's clear. Hello, Alejandro. We're just answering some questions on grammar and such. Welcome. We were looking at a video about the news and some phrasal verbs, and I had an audio problem again. Um, but I promise no more. Uh, and if I do, well, then I don't know what. But um, the scariest thing that happened to me, I think, well, this, so I've never been in a hurricane or a typhoon or anything like that. But I did have one scary thing happen to me relating to water. So I was on a tour in Puerto Rico. Uh, and that is beautiful tropical place, rainforest, right? Jungles, really, really nice, beautiful place, very warm. And it was, uh, uh, I think it was to go into the jungle to see a waterfall or something like that. So there were a lot of rivers. 
and we were driving along through the rivers and the guide said you know people have died on this tour <laughs> that we're on because of flash floods and i thought what is a what is a flash flood first of all i've heard that it's a sudden flood but how does that work he said if there's rain on one part of a mountain in a jungle it may go it, the level in that stream near where it rains will flow into a larger river or stream and they'll combine very quickly and then there's a sudden torrent of water where the water level in the river rises quickly and i just couldn't really picture what that would be like i as he was saying that i was thinking it's got to be slower than that how could you die uh, in, in a flash flood couldn't you just see the water slowly rising higher and higher and then get out right but he said well okay it, it rained about 10 minutes ago and it had rained 10 minutes ago we'll see so later we went into a a river we were in the river very very beautiful river and uh, we were jumping off rocks and doing a rope swing thing. It was, it was really fun. And one thing that happened was there were these little fish in the river. And for some reason, they were swarming around me. They weren't swarming around others, but they were swimming around me, just these little fish. And when I would turn in the water, they would follow my hands like that they were following the the uh wake from my, move, the movement of my hands and they were just swimming around me it was very weird and uh people were making jokes like uh like i'm i was jesus or something and anyway suddenly we heard a noise it was like a it was a rumble and a rush like that sound we thought what is that I, I think because I was closest to it, I heard it first. I looked over and I saw a, a wall of water coming down the river. Have you ever seen Lord of the Rings, the first of the Lord of the Rings films, The Fellowship of the Ring? There's one scene where Frodo is about to die and he's he, he has to be taken to the land of the elves so Aragorn's girlfriend uh, takes him on her horse and they ride really fast across the river and they're being chased by the black ring wraiths and they cross the river and she says a prayer, an elvish prayer, and then the, the water, a torrent of water comes and washes away the wraiths and it's this huge wall it was like that except brown <laughs> instead of white <laughs> it wasn't quite that big but the thing that shocked me was that it was so sudden it wasn't a gradual increase in the uh, height of the water uh, it, it wasn't like it was the water level was slowly going up it was this wall probably about i don't know how high maybe f five five or six feet tall rushing toward us and you could see it coming and hear it coming and so we all rushed out of the water and just as we got out of the water this massive torrent of water came and I suddenly understood what he meant when he said people have died on this tour because you could if you had been caught in that you could easily easily drown the power of the water was so strong. The water in the river normally was very calm and quiet, but that that was a huge torrent of water rushing down the river, and uh, it was pretty scary to, to see. I have a video of it somewhere. I don't know where it is, but if I can find it, I would like to show it because uh, that was a pretty crazy experience for sure. I'm curious if I do have... A video of it pardon me while I just while I just take a quick look Chama says you always explain things in different ways than other teachers and make it all crystal clear well thank you so much Chama I appreciate that that means a lot to me thank you I try my best um, everyone has their own their own style of doing things of course um, okay 
There's Puerto Rico. Do I have, there's the day. Okay, wait a second. I do have a video from the river. I have a video from the river on that day. Um, but I don't have a video. It looks like I don't have a video of the water. Why would I not have taken a video of that? Hmm. Yeah, unfortunately not. Unfortunately not. Darn, why not? Puerto Rico, I had the greatest pina colada I've ever had in my entire life. It was the, it was very memorable. It was a very memorable pina colada. Actually, I think it's in one of my videos. I have a video where I a, a video about Puerto Rico, going to Puerto Rico, and at the end of the video, I was walking toward the pina colada place, and when I got there, I had a pina colada. It was the best pina colada I've ever had. <laughs> Hello, Pipe ninety nine. Welcome. Good to have you. Good to have you. Uh, those just joining, welcome. Happy Friday. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we've been talking about hurricane-related things, but if you have questions about other stuff like grammar, culture, pronunciation, idioms, phrases, word differences, or anything else, just let me know. Uh, we have a few other topics planned for today. Probably won't go as long as usual. Maybe not the full uh, two hours today. But uh, uh, because I, I did have another thing planned that had to get canceled. But we'll do that next week. But i um, happy to answer any questions that you may have. In the meantime, in the meantime... Why don't we go over to our good old friend, Reddit English Learning. Yes. Reddit English as a second language, Reddit English Learning. We've been through this many times, but it's a continuously great source of cool questions that people have about English learning. I haven't been posting the videos on here um, so I'm, maybe one day they'll figure out, but uh, I do want to just go through one or two. Does the informal use of was with every pronoun still occur in the U.S.? Ah, uh, I would say yes. They was I she was uh, wait we was yeah I would say so. My English level is good enough, but there is a sentence in um, the American Pie song from Don McLean that I don't understand. He sings, I was lonely, teenage. Ah. Okay. This is interesting. I would have to listen to it for sure. Oh, no. Let's just look up the lyrics. Let's just look up the lyrics. Um, lyrics to American Pie. Okay. Made me shiver with every paper I'd deliver. Uh, I can remember when she cried, blah, blah, blah. Where is that specific line? Okay, here we go. I was a lonely teenage bronken buck with a pink carnation and a pickup truck, but I knew I was out of luck the day the music died. If you haven't heard this song, it's a really good song. It's a classic. It's a it's an epic song. Okay, so uh bronken buck. So a young buck is a buck is a male deer uh buck is a um yeah buck is a male deer but bronken in front of it is actually a really good question when i hear i was a bronken buck i get an image right of the a youthful young man who uh uh who you know n knows 
or he feels confident and is, you know, exploring life. But I, I, if I look at the word bronken by itself, I don't actually know what it means. To, if I'm honest with myself, I can't actually give a definition. So let's see if we can find out together. Uh, that'll be that'll be interesting. Hold on, let me. Um, Okay, so let me search the word. Oh, let me let me see if I can just uh, highlight it and define it like this. Look up Bronken. <laughs> um, a village in the administrative di district. No, <laughs> that's not what we're looking for. I think we need to look for the word Bronking. Okay. Obsessed with pleasing people, this person will forego his own emotions and feelings to make someone else feel better. That doesn't sound right. Uh, bucking, bronc riding, either bareback bronc or saddle bronc competition is a rodeo event that involves a rodeo participant riding a bucking horse. Okay, so maybe buck is in relation to bucking. A bucking horse... Uh, is uh, in the cowboy world they have rodeos and the horse jumps up and down uh, uh, and they have to try to stay on the horse for I think eight seconds it's a competition it's a thing that they do and I guess the name for that is I know bronco but I guess I wasn't familiar with bronc so bronco is um, is a horse um, this kind of rodeo horse and it's also the name of an NFL team the Denver Broncos and it's also the name of a car brand uh, or a specific car it's a Bronco a Bronco is a it's a, like an off-road truck is it a truck or an SUV I don't know off I think of it it as off-road so apparently Bronc is a shorter version of that and so a bronking buck now we have to solve the problem of what it means to put it together what does bronking buck mean? Not big buck. Okay, a bronken buck expressions originates from bucking bronco, a wild horse that is vicious and difficult or impossible to break in, where bronco means an unbroken or imperfectly broken mustang. Uh, and to buck means to resist. Oh, wow. So that's pretty deep. A bronken buck. I still don't even know if I can say what it means when I'm looking at it. But uh, okay, so to answer your question, but not very well. Um, a bronken buck is probably a young, I guess my visual image was right, but I didn't understand why. Uh, the idea of a young untamed young man maybe with a little of resentment who's not easy to control and bronken is in relation to this type of horse and a buck is also in relation to a similar type of horse or stallion and we get rodeo imagery when we see that huh okay interesting chama i see your question I do want to answer another one. Let's get to another Reddit question, though. Um, this is actually a really good question. I was wondering, what is the difference between think of and think about? So, that's great. So, we have two prepositions, of and about. And it highlights the importance of prepositions. We think of prepositions of, about, for, from, at, with, by. We think of these as these little words that don't mean much and they just link things together, right? But in fact, that is not the case. They can have a strong influence on the meaning of words or phrases, or sentences, or descriptions, right? The example I like to give is this. You look 
from there to there. From there to there. So the from and the to are actually the most important part of that sentence. The looking, yeah, but if we just say you look, that's a sentence, but it's not telling us what's going on. Okay, there and there, still not telling us what's going on. The from beginning and to there ending is the interesting part of that sentence. It's telling us about the action. It's giving us the picture. And it's those prepositions which are doing that, right? So that's what's cool about prepositions. So, okay, think of and think about. If you think of something that is similar to a, a finger snap, right? Just that. It's about the connection your between your brain and the object of the thought, right? And that's similar to pointing your eyes at something, right? To look at something is to point your eyes at that. What are you looking at now? Probably me, right? Or a light, or a computer screen, or a cup. And so there's this thing that happens that you're doing. And yes, you can look at something for a while, that's true. But to think of something is, bing, there it is, it appears in your head, right? How would we use it? We might say, uh, when I smell lilacs, I think of the end of the school year. And that's true. For me, when I, whenever I get a whiff of lilac, I'm flooded with memories, right, of that. It is, but it's sort of instant. It's just, boom, it's right there. So that's like looking at something, pointing at something, right? In a way, the image or the memory pops up in my mind, and then maybe I just let it go, right? I was thinking of you, I was thinking of you when I heard that song. So you think of them, they're the thing in your mind, but it's kind of static. It's an image. It's just a thing that's there, right? Uh, I always think of you when I wear cowboy boots. Because remember that time 10 years ago when we went to the rodeo and we bought those cowboy boots and we were dancing around and that looked so stupid? Right, so now whenever I wear cowboy boots, I think of you. Okay, again, it's an image. And yeah, we might think of, we might have it in our minds for a while, but it's static. It's not really moving. Okay. So what about about then? And this is interesting. I think about something as a kind of process of having a beginning and maybe a middle and an end point where the end is not the same as the beginning. Usually, it could you could say I was thinking about you when I saw uh, the cowboy boots, you could say that, okay, so it's not wrong, but that thinking of is better because it's static, it's not moving, it's just a sort of object, usually of memory, but the thinking about is a changing process, maybe we're trying to solve something, maybe we're trying to find a solution, maybe we're trying to get to an answer, maybe we're working through something in some way, right? Have you ever been irritated by something and you're not quite sure why, right? Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe you didn't do as well as you wanted to do in something work-related, right? And that evening you're sitting at home like this, right? And someone says, hey, what are you doing? Because you've just been staring like this for the last 20 minutes. And someone says, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just thinking about some work thing that happened today. I know I could have done it better or I could have done it differently. And if I had done it differently, then it would have been, this would have happened and that would have happened. So there's more going on. Maybe you're untangling the knot uh, of the workday and the thing that you could have done differently, right? Or you're given a creative challenge. You're giving a, given a problem, right? Uh, you have to buy a... a 10-year wedding anniversary gift for your spouse, and you're, I want to get something really memorable, not something as boring as, you know, just a, uh, a ring or something like that, or jewelry. I want to get something really unique and creative, and so you're not thinking of that. You're thinking about that because there's machinery going on. It's moving. 
There's a process. You're building something. And that's the general idea. So to be clear, these two think of and think about while you can use them in the same way, for example, thinking about a flower, thinking of a flower, okay, you can. The general idea is thinking of static image, not really moving, it's just an object, and thinking about is a process where you're contemplating something, you're working through a problem, and it's more creative. So hopefully that answers your question, Chama. If not, let me know, but it is a very good question. All right. Hello, Karev? 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 Great is that. That was a great question. Really appreciate that question. Koji Takeda says, Hilt's been while we have typhoons here. In oh, it's been a while since we have. It's been a while since maybe we have typhoons here. Hmm? Well, yeah, here it being in Japan, right? Yeah, I just want to I want to make sure my I think that's true. Um, but if you don't mind, I'm just want to search that. Uh, I'm pretty sure the difference between a typhoon and a hurricane is that one is in the Western Hemisphere and one is in the Eastern Hemisphere. What is uh, what is the difference between a typhoon and a hurricane. Typhoon and a hurricane. Okay. All right. If it's above the North Atlantic, Central North Pacific, or Eastern North Pacific Oceans, Florida, Caribbean Islands, Texas, Hawaii, we call it a hurricane. If it hovers over the Northwest Pacific Ocean, usually East Asia, we call it a typhoon. I think that means I'm right, eh? Oh, so it's not an East-West thing. It's actually a North-South thing. But it's a... Ah, this is even... Oh, you know, it is an East-West thing. Okay. Okay, so if, if it's in the Pacific or Atlantic Ocean here, in the yellow... To a certain point along the coast of the United States, Canada, Mexico, then hurricane. If it's on the east coast of the United States, Canada, and all the way around here, I guess, through North Africa and Europe here, then we call it a hurricane. It looks like if it's below the equator, is that the equator? Then it's a cyclone. Interesting. And then a typhoon in Asia and Russia. What about here in Australia? Maybe they don't have a lot of them. That's still quite interesting. Uh, here's what I want to know. Why does the Red Cross need to know my location? No, thank you. Did you know tropical cyclones above the equator spin counterclockwise while those below spin clockwise? Counter, uh, counterclockwise and clockwise. This is not a difference in storms, but rather a result of the Coriolis effect, a force in physics causing our position on Earth to shape our perspective. If a storm forms in one place and crosses over the international dateline, it will change names. For instance, oh, that's interesting. What? If a storm forms in one place and crosses over the international dateline, it will change names. For instance, uh, in 2014, Hurricane Genevieve, Genevieve formed in the Eastern Pacific, but became Super Typhoon Genevieve as it moved, as it moved west and crossed the international dateline. So it changed from a hurricane to a typhoon. That's very interesting. All right. Well, thank you for that tip. I'm gonna donate. I'm gonna donate 98. Uh, I'm going to eat 98. Can I donate 98? Oh, well, I wanted to donate $98 million, but they only let me donate 980 million. I, I can only down, do 980,000. 909. Let's see how. Can, is probably the max is 
999,999. Um, yeah, that's the max. Can I donate $1 million? No? Well, that's their loss. Forget it then. I was going to do it, but now I have changed my mind. They should have let me donate more. Give blood? Online? <laughs> no thanks. Oh, you're welcome. L uh, long, hello, hello, welcome. Appreciate it. Louise, greetings. Karina, hello, good to have you. All right. Um, we do want to talk about bridges, but can I do one more English, Reddit English question before we go to talk about, go on to talk about bridges? Yes, we shall. Keep the questions coming, though, if you have any questions. Let me know if anyone wants me to send them $980 million. Also, let me know. I'm happy to do it. Um, okay, let's pop over here. Don't you need to clean your car? Don't you need to check your email? Okay, that's not that's an interesting one. That one's not bad. I'm wondering if there are any rules which can help me learn how to change a word from a verb to a noun. Probably not there. Yeah. I don't think there are any concrete rules there. Is ratio of A to B the same as proportion B to A? Does cursed have two pronunciations? Uh, I don't think so. Accursed, though, would be. Oh, that's, that's, that's pretty interesting. Sorry, I'm just reading through a few of these. Hi, native English speakers. Are both of the following two sentences correct and natural sounding? If so, and even so. Mm. Ooh, pronunciation question. I like that. Shadowing technique tried to be used. It was quite bad. I think I'm not really ready for it. Get it for practice. Pronounce a word. Should I first improve my pronunciation? Oh, okay. This is the one. I like this one. All right. Which is a more efficient way of improving pronunciation? I heard a lot about shadowing technique. Tried to do some, but my pronunciation is quite bad. And I think I'm not ready for it because every five seconds practicing it, I have to look up how to pronounce a word. Should I first improve my pronunciation and then do the shadowing or just keep trying to shadow and the pronunciation will improve naturally? If you have any tips or experience as well about the topic, please feel free to share with me. This is a great question on pronunciation. How do you, how do you improve your pronunciation? I think it's kind of an interesting question because they found the answer but are afraid to do the answer completely or commit to the answer, it seems like. And they seem to think that there is some other thing that's going to teach them how to do the practice, but actually the practice is how you do it, right? So the short answer is shadowing is a fantastic way to improve pronunciation even if you're starting from zero and the reason it's fantastic is that it forces you to use your ears to improve pronunciation rather than something else because the something else is always going to be an intermediate and that intermediate can cause a lot of problems for example phonetic symbols phonetic symbols and and even phonetic spelling are imperfect. They try to represent sounds to teach you how to say them, 
but they don't capture all of them and they don't capture them perfectly. And also pronunciation is not so clean that once you know these sounds, you're done because there are a bunch of little bitty tiny nuances that you need to pick up in order to sound completely natural. And that can never be captured in a system of symbols or spelling. Okay, so then what about watching pronunciation, seeing the little diagrams with where to put your tongue? Should you do that first? Well, again, that's standing in the middle. That might be a good way to train yourself to, okay, I put my tongue up and back when I say the er, r sound, and now I know where I need to put my tongue. So it can help, right? But why not get immediate experience and at the same time develop your ability to Notice the subtle nuances and differences between sounds. That's what shadowing gets you. So shadowing is the technique of listening to pronunciation that you want to emulate or copy and then exactly following it, exactly copying those sounds. So if it's if it's a one one word, right? Uh, you might hear a sentence like, uh, do you want to get an ice cream? Okay, so what I want to master there is in that sentence, do you want to get an ice cream? I want to master the ways that the, the, the words blend into each other, how one kind of goes into the next one. I want to really master that flowing pronunciation. And so what should I do? Uh, well, I could study the graphs and I could study the phonetic symptoms. No, 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 no. What you should do is repeat it and force yourself to listen to both what you're trying to copy and your own sound. So it's forcing you to notice what are these sounds exactly with your ears, which is very important, developing your listening, and then the awareness to hear the difference between what you're saying and what you're hearing, right? And I'll talk about the issue that this person has in a second. So what was the sentence I said? Do you want an ice cream, right? Do we want an I can't remember what it was. <laughs> I just made it up. Let's say it was, do you want some ice cream? Okay. Do you want some ice cream? So the first one there, do you want, maybe I'm saying it normally, do you want? And I, I'm realizing that doesn't flow very well. So I listen carefully. Do you, okay, so I just say that, do you, do you, what I'm, what I'm doing now is I'm separating it from the words, forget about the do and the you, what are the sounds, so you're working on the level specifically of the sounds, do you, whatever that means, do you, do you, just say that, can you do that, do you, do you, do you, okay, do you want, do you want, do you want, that's kind of one continuous piece, do you want, and it's very flowy, right? All I'm going to try to do is imitate that. And then I might notice when I say want, do you want, do you want, I'm saying t, but what I'm hearing is do you want. So it's stopping, but I'm not hearing the t sound. But it's not a do you wa, it's do you want. So how do I do that? Okay, to do the uh, I have to, I have to, kind of do an ab crunch there, right? <laughs> and then I'm able to make that stop sound, and that's one pronunciation of T. You only realize this as you're doing the shadowing. Do you want, do you want, okay, do you want some ice cream? And then the semi, semi, so there's no some, some ice cream. It's a some, some, oh, there's, it's almost unstressed there. Some my, some my, and that sounds like M-Y, some ice cream, some ice cream. So you could do that with just that one sentence and look how much you're learning from just that, right? So it's very powerful. It's very good. Again, it improves your, your pronunciation because you're learning directly. You're then improving your ability to hear new sounds and process them. You don't have to look up pronunciation because if you're shadowing, why do you need to look up the pronunciation? This person says, I need to look up pronunciation every five seconds. What do you mean? You have the pronunciation right there in the sound that you're shadowing, in the original sound. That's the pronunciation. You don't need to look up anything. Just repeat that, <laughs> okay? So 
the other issue then I think is about this every five seconds thing. You probably don't need more than five seconds. The problem would be to take something that's like 10 minutes long and to say, I'm going to shadow this 10 minute thing. That's a huge mistake. Instead, go with little pieces, maybe, maybe 30 seconds at the most. 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds, and master that. Instead of, I'm just going to fly through this 10 minute thing, that you're not going to improve that much. I'm going to absolutely master this 30 second thing, get all the sounds right, and trust me, the amount that you can learn in that 30 seconds, if you truly master it, is incredible. You're going to develop muscle memory habits, awareness, learn how people actually speak rather than the correct pronunciation. It's really powerful. I strongly recommend it. And uh, so I think you've found the right thing, but you're doing it the wrong way. But hopefully, hopefully you can change, do it a little differently, and you'll see a lot of progress. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of shadowing, big believer in shadowing. It's, it is the only way to go, to be honest. What's the difference between past perfect and present per perfect? That's a good question. During my stay in Florida, I had a really hard time understanding specifically African Americans. Yeah, that's just another dialect to get into. That is black English, and black English is different from what you're probably used to hearing, right? It's different. Um, uh, John McWhorter, who's a linguist, uh, he talks about it a lot. Uh, he's black, so I guess he can talk about it. He's more qualified to talk about it than, for example, I am. But it's been called Ebonics. It's been called Black English. It's a dialect, a specific dialect that uses some different sounds and some different grammatical structures but it is absolutely a dialect. And the reason that people may not understand it as much is because they don't get as much exposure to that dialect and they get much more exposure to, uh, to other, other dialects or the sort of, um, I don't know, neutral, neutral American, generic, generic neutral American English, I suppose, if I can call it that. Abdul Malik says, what's the difference between past perfect and present perfect, and how can I use them effectively? Okay, so that's a great question, Abdul Malik. And I think to answer it correctly, we should probably, uh, we should probably write a few things down. Now, to be clear, what is the past perfect and what is the present perfect and how are these used? If you want to learn this in a lot of depth, I would strongly recommend checking out my courses, either the English Grammar Complete course or the uh, uh, Master Native English course. Those two courses cover it pretty extensively, um, but we can go through a few. Uh, we can go through a few more specific examples just to get a general sense for how these work. So, head over to the board quickly and talk about how we build these. So let's start with the present, the present perfect. And generally this is subject, I, you, he, she, it, plus have or has, plus, let's call it the past participle, PP, I'm going to write PP, and then uh, and then we'll talk about what can happen after that. So an example of this would be, I have seen it. Okay, or she have or has, has, has to agree. So the have or has depends on the subject. She has been 
there. Now in this specific case, we're following this um, with the thing that we're talking about. This would be the object, right, of the verb. But it doesn't have to be that way. We can also use a variation of this, which has, for example, an ing. So that's followed by what we would call a gerund, all right? So we have or has, have been, and then here we'll put an ing verb. Now, if we use the ing verb, or what's called the gerund, after this past participle, then this has to be been. If we don't use it, and we have here, for example, the object of the verb, then it can be any other verb, right? The past participle is a, a special form. I have given, I have taken, I have eaten. I have been, I have seen, I have done. All of these are the past participle. Sometimes the past participle is the same as the regular simple past tense, tense and sometimes not. Okay, we have been working together, and usually this is going to be about time. Often this is about time. It doesn't have to be, but it's often for time. We have been working together for 30 years. Okay, so that's a long period of time. This is actually called present perfect progressive with the ing, and it's a little different because it always has been, whereas with the others we have say, I have seen it, then we could say seen it I don't know, three times, I have seen it before, I have eaten already. Um, so the reason I say it doesn't have to be, we, we can put different things in here, is that it could be the object, it could be a noun, it could be, for example, an it, right, or a there, but it could be something like, I have, I have eaten today, or I have eaten already. Okay, well, already, that's not a noun, that's not a thing, right? So there are a lot of different ways uh, to use it, and we're not going to look at all of the examples. I'm just trying to give you a sense for this, okay? So that's the present perfect and present perfect progressive. And then you have the past perfect and past perfect. You have the past. You have the past. Past. And this is a little simpler in some ways because you have the uh, subject plus had. Had only. Plus past participle. And then something, okay? Simple example, I had um, taken one. Okay, now what's going on with this one? With the present perfect, what we're talking about is stating a truth right about the present, but in reference to the past. It's true right now that we have been working together for 30 years. Right now, we are still working together, and it started in the past, right? 30 years ago, but it's still going on. So it's a statement about the truth. It's different from the past tense in that we're talking about a, a present truth in reference to the past rather than focusing on a past event, like I ate a banana for breakfast, right? Instead of, I have eaten three bananas today, which would be about right now. What's true about right now? I have eaten three bananas in reference to the past because all of those three happened today. I ate one at six in the morning, 10 in the morning, and 11 in the morning. <laughs> Weird thing to do. So I had taken one is to say it's true well, this is a little different. I have taken one is to say it's true about me that I have taken one. I forget about when it happened, right? I had taken one. Now, past perfect tense usually is going to be in reference to another past event. So if we have a timeline here, right? Then I'm talking about when yesterday I took the second one. Now, this is, this is now, right? And I'm referencing this first one. Maybe I'm talking about a, a medication that I take, right? So I take a pill here at uh, uh, 
at 8 in the morning and I take one here at 6 p.m., right? So I'm referencing this time. I'm talking about this time, but this is not right now. This is yesterday at 6 p.m. Now is, is noon today. This is yesterday at 6 p.m. And then when I say I had taken one, now I'm talking about this past event before the past event I'm talking about. I had already taken one. I had taken one already. Okay, so this is the second one I'm taking. I had taken three already. So that means I'm now talking about the fourth one. If I had taken three already, I'm talking about yesterday when I took the fourth one, right? Does that make sense? So there's one, two, then I would say I had taken three, three. Okay, so when we talk about the past perfect tense, the basic structure is the same. The difference is with the present perfect, we're referencing now and then focusing on the past in reference to now. And past perfect tense, we forget about the now and we reference a past period of time or a past event before another past event. Got it? <laughs> now, if we want to, we can use the past perfect tense to, to talk to be we can make the, <laughs> we can make the past perfect tense also continuous we can say she had been taking three Per day. Okay. Now let's just say this is a multivitamin, okay? Now the question is Is she taking three per day still? The answer is clearly no. Because if I say, if I want to say that she's continuing to take three per day, then I will use the present perfect tense. She has been taking three today. She has been th taking three per day. Is she still taking three per day? Yes. Will she continue? Yes. Okay. But she had been taking three today is now suggesting that at some point in the past, she stopped taking three per day for some reason, right? So here's a, a continuous thing. Three per day, three per day, three per day, three per day. And then this is last month. This is the 13th of last month. And on this day, on the 13th of last month, she decided to stop. And on this day, she said no more. Maybe she was having a bad reaction to it. This multivitamin was causing her to have superpowers and other people were jealous. And so she decided to stop taking it. Okay. So she had been taking three per day of this superpower multivitamin and then decided to stop on the 13th of last month. Now she's not taking it at all. So our reference point is a past point, And that's the reason that we use the past perfect tense, not the present perfect tense. Okay, that's the basic idea. So I know this is really complicated and it's also very complicated for me to kind of come up with uh, on the spot, uh, but I've talked about this a lot, so it's something that I can I can speak about fairly, fairly well. But I hope that answers your question, Abdul Malik, at least a little bit. If you want to learn more about this in depth, right, you want to learn about different tenses and how these work, including the present and the past perfect tenses, I would strongly recommend checking out my full grammar course. I have a full grammar course that should be on sale. It's called English Grammar Complete. And it includes this, among other things, uh, it's quite a long and intensive course all about different sentence structures. And it is essentially me talking like, like this for many hours, except <laughs> I've prepared for much longer uh, for those examples. So they're uh, a little bit, they're even more, uh, even more clear and will really help you understand how the different tenses work. So hopefully, Abdul Malik, those make sense. If you have any questions about this, let me know. And don't forget to check out the courses. All right. Yeah, I can understand. I mean, it, it really takes tons of examples to get it because it's so complicated um, to explore all of the tenses. But that's the basic idea. 
I had just I just had taken one. I had just taken one. I didn't eat all of them. Is that good? You would just switch instead of just had Alejandro. You want to say I had just. I had just taken one. That would be then correct. Then you've got it. She'd been taken three. She'd been taking T A T A K I N G. She'd been taking T A K I N G three per day, but now she's taking only two per day, which is perfectly correct. So well done, Alejandro. It's almost like you have taken one of my courses on the subject because clearly you know your stuff, which is great to see. Um, Uh, for example, I had got married since 2020. Um, okay, so this one. Uh, okay. Um, I had got married since 2020. Take out the since, right? If you want to use this one, the, there, there are a couple of issues. Number one, you're talking about getting married and then saying where you were is that i don't know how to pronounce that kokuta before you move to bogota right so if we're talking about where you live then we need to talk about where you live and let's not talk about getting married so there's a confusion of verbs here you got married or you living right so if we're talking about getting married just say i got married in 2020 don't say since 2020 don't say I don't say I well if you wanted to say it in the present perfect tense you could say I have been married since 2020 that is correct that's fine but now if we're talking about moving forget about marriage that's just confusing it okay how about this I had uh, I'm getting pronunciation help kukota uh, kukata kukata and Bogota, I, I haven't been, but I, I know. I think that's how to say it. Okay. So, I had lived in Kukata until 2020 when I moved to Bogota. That would be correct. Oh, I'm getting another correction here. Kukuta. Ah, okay. See, you got to help me out here. Um I had been living in Cucuta until 2020 when I moved to Bogota. Bingo. That would be how you say that. Don't mix your verbs. Don't mix your actions. Don't say married and then lived. That's going to confuse people. Okay? Okay. Um... Rolita, I'm, I apologize if it's confusing. It is a little confusing. It just takes time. And to be honest, you know, it takes a lot of... Uh, uh, what the heck is this? Look pretty. Grubhub. Order minimum. What is this? Hold on a second. I'm seeing an order? A red lobster? I... I what the heck? An order. Hold on. I have to call my wife. Because I just saw that someone had has ordered a meal at Red Lobster for $69. <laughs> and that wasn't me because I've been live streaming. So I want to either check if someone hacked my credit card or is my wife doing stuff. Um... Give me one second here. Hey, Mushroom. Hey, quick question. Did you order something from Red Lobster for $69.13? No. Did you anything Red Lobster related? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, then it looks like someone has tried to use my card to make a 
make a red lobster order. Very weird. Okay. I'll get it sorted. Thank you. All right. Bye. Uh, uh what? That's crazy. Hmm. I have to sort that out. I have a f uh, fraud thing on my app, but, um, oh, wow. Someone has made... Someone has made an order. And this is to which using my email. All right, I have to get this sorted. I think I'm going to do that, guys, because I want to make sure people, someone doesn't. Sometimes with the fraud stuff, they do us, people will do a small purchase and then they'll do a broad purchase or they'll do a small purchase as a test to see, hey, can I use this? And then they'll do a big purchase and so I'm gonna see if I can get this sorted um, it's a small amount but still very weird so I'm gonna get it sorted sorry for cutting it short guys I, I appreciate all the questions uh, next week we're gonna be doing a one-to-one -one class um, one of the uh, one of you guys will be joining me so that's fantastic if you haven't already done so, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Check out the courses. Um, the, there's a Udemy sale going on right now. It's a site-wide Udemy sale. So all the courses are on sale there, I believe, right now. So check those out. If I didn't get to your question, I apologize. I got to deal with this. <laughs> I had to deal with this uh, order from Red Lobster that I did not make. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Take care, everybody and have a fantastic weekend. Okay, okay.